Hey guys, I thought I would share with you um, our pantry down here. This is our overflow pantry and just share with you a little bit about what is down here. This is actually much smaller than what it used to be. And that is because we are actually taking or we're taking this part of storage and turning it into a bathroom down here in the basement. So I'm losing, I don't know, a third of my storage down here. Um, I used to have this shelf here. I had some over across in front of me here. And so now I've had to kind of just make do with that much. And honestly, I have actually cut down on how much I am storing at this point in time. Um, and a little bit more about that later, but I just added this salsa right here, um, canned some salsa with a friend yesterday. So I brought it down here and I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and show you my overflow pantry. There's gonna be a wall here and I am going to put shelving back up there and probably store some things there, but because I'm losing a third of my storage, um, I'm feeling like I kind of need to cut down a little bit. And so I have been using up things that um, I used to have quite a bit of so that I can fit it all on this black shelf and then this shelving unit. And I also have things obviously sitting on the floor and then I have buckets. So I'll just start at the top here. These are the things that we just do not touch. These are total emergency freeze dried foods from Augustine Farms. Um, I have some things that I felt like we could put together as a meal if we needed to, and it wouldn't be difficult. The um, egg powder, the butter, the potato slices, sorry about the glare there, how about that? Um, honey powder, peanut butter. And then I've got a big old bucket of lard. And then I've got a couple of um, protein shake type things up there that probably need to be used. This is our favorite tea for iced tea, Tetley. We get the family sized bags and we drink an awful lot of iced tea. Um, and then just some baking supplies here, not a lot. This is like just something fast and quick if we need it. Um, this was purchased last year because I was feeling like it was potentially gonna be impossible to find um, some of the foods for our Thanksgiving celebration. And so I went ahead and bought some things. You'll see there's some pumpkin. Um, and we were having a very difficult time finding like pineapple and cranberry and things like that in our area. And so I went ahead and bought some when I found it. Now I did end up this over here, all of this here, that's canned cranberry sauce. When the cranberries came out that were fresh, um, I popped a whole bunch of those into the freezer. And then later on, I just made cranberry sauce. And this is what we end up using now. We mix this with, down here, crushed pineapple. We mix those and we make our um, cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving. So we also have, this is apple butter, I believe. Yeah, this is apple butter. So all of this is apple butter. I honestly am not a huge fan of apple butter, um, but I had excess apples. And then this is the last um, peach jam that I have for the year. I did not make any peach jam this year. I did not find peaches at a very good price. And the one time I did find a good price on peaches, we were needing to leave and I was not going to be able to even put them in the freezer or anything. So I had to just walk away from that deal because it was not an ideal time. Um, I will say, I didn't mention these. I do have powdered milk here. Um, these are not my favorite powdered milks. I actually really prefer the Nido, the N-I-D-O. Those are so good, but these last longer. So they're more shelf stable than the Nido. And then down here I have more baking supplies. I actually have an entire baking cabinet upstairs that I keep all of the things on hand that I need to bake with, but this is my overflow. This whole pantry area is an overflow pantry. It's where I keep everything that's not gonna fit upstairs. It's the excess and such that I keep on hand. Um, I do keep some cake mixes on hand. I have a gooey butter cake recipe on my blog 
that takes a cake mix. I could make the cake mix myself. I also have a recipe for making your own cake mix, but in for convenience sake, I do like to keep some things like that on hand. Um, and then I keep white sugar on hand for like the hummingbirds and um, baking soda, uh, you know, just your usual sugars and things like that. I usually have more than that, but um, not right now. Like I said, I have had to pare down some. I usually have way more maple syrup than this, but the kids have been really into maple syrup lately. And then this is left over from vacation, just a regular syrup there. Um, more pumpkin and then this is apple pie filling and peach pie filling that I canned last year. We went to go apple picking this last weekend and they were all out of apples. They had been picked clean. So I'm hoping this next weekend maybe we can get some apples. Okay, moving down, we eat an inordinate amount of popcorn. So popcorn, popcorn seasonings. We have a thing like this upstairs full of popcorn seasonings too because we eat a lot of popcorn. And then this is all the salsa I canned the other day, minus um, two jars that I left with my friend and one jar that is upstairs getting ready to be opened. And so I got a, a goodly amount there. Um, the friend that I canned with, they were mostly her tomatoes and then um, and her peppers, frankly. And then I had been given some onions. And so basically it was completely free other than the time and energy that I had to spend making it. And it was fun because I did it with a friend. Um, we sometimes put this stuff on our potatoes. I probably ought to keep that upstairs. There back there, that's some bread and butter pickles that I made last year. And then these are all like pickle type things. Um, I pickled some peppers last year. I have pimentos for pimento and cheese. Um, the way that we make our pimento and cheese is we just take shredded cheese and mayonnaise and pimentos, and that is it. I have some olives, and then we have some different sauerkrauts there. Moving down, this is where I keep the juice. Um, we don't drink a lot of juice, but we do drink lemonade and limeades. So I have lemon juice there, and then this is for the hot punch, and also that recipe is on the blog. It takes pineapple juice and cranberry juice, and so I keep those on hand so that I can easily make that when it is um, hot punch season. And my daughter just took an applesauce upstairs to eat, and it's funny to me to see how depleted this is. I mean, it used to be just full, like we'd have a whole row of applesauce and a whole row of lemon juice and I really have not kept that up because of needing to condense my space. Um, these are just canned fruits. We don't eat a lot of canned fruits but I wanted to have them on hand in case we couldn't get fresh fruit and my kids are definitely fruit eaters so I do have mandarin oranges, several different kinds of pineapple. Um, the pineapple slices we use to make um, pineapple upside down cake and then we use the crushed pineapple like I said for my cranberry sauce the cranberry celebration salad is also on the blog if you wanted to check that out and then the rest of this is just something to have on hand if we needed some fruit in our lives um, my nuts and peanut butter are down here the corn flakes are just kind of off here to the side because I actually have corn flakes over there too needs a little bit of reorganizing but we um, bread the creamed pheasant that we make also recipe on the blog um, I'll have all these recipes linked down in the description for you but the corn flakes is how we um, bread the pheasant before we fry it and then um, we do like to have Big Mac salad. And so that's what this is for. While I could make my own, sometimes you just like to have the convenience of it. Um, a dry onion soup mix, we use that a lot for roasts. Uh, I have a skillet roast recipe on the blog that uses a dry onion soup mix. And then our um, oven stew, also on the blog. <laughs> um, it also uses dry onion soup mix. And then we have a winter stew recipe on the blog that uses this creamy potato. It is so, so good. Um, I do have some soups on hand. Uh, the kids have not been eating much soup yet because it's not cool enough out for them, but typically we have soup, salad, or sandwiches for lunch. And so I do keep some canned soups on hand for them. 
these are my olive and avocado oils down here and then i do have a canola or vegetable or something back there and my olive oil spray um more cornflakes this is for puppy chow and then usually i have rice krispies on hand too for scotcheroos but i have apparently not purchased those yet for the fall season that is definitely a fall treat that we have and yes the recipe is on the blog and then down here on the floor um this is where they just have to be for now these are all my pastas and rice except i do have one of these buckets is rice um, but I also, I am very partial to that jasmine rice there. And I find that I'm not using the stuff in the bucket because I keep wanting to have the jasmine rice. So at some point I need to use the stuff in the bucket. Um, I do like to rotate through my stock. Um, and then we have the mashed potatoes there. I did a video about um, scrap saving. And when we save the scraps in the jar in the freezer, we use these mashed potatoes from Aldi to cover it with some cheese and we make like a shepherd's pie out of all of the scraps that I have saved. So check out that video to learn more about how we do the scrap saving. Back there, that is Redmond salt and then just regular iodized salt. Um, for our table salt, I do or actually, yeah, for our cooking salt and sometimes our table salt, I will add on, add in some iodized salt um, just because I was finding that my thyroid was not happy with not having some of the iodized salt. And so I do add that in. Um, there is one lonely box of mac and cheese. Um, over here are the croutons that we use for the Caesar chicken wraps. My husband's cherries, tart cherries here that he likes to have for snacks when he's out in the field with the military and then some pistachios and then this guy back here that is a 50 pound sack of um, unbleached flour and we buy that in bulk from an Amish bulk food store um, back where we're originally from every time we go down there we make a trip and grab what we need from there um, in these tubs like I said there's rice there's oatmeal there's wheat berries and hmm, I can't remember what the other thing is. Um, I hate to open them right now, but anyway, that's that's what's in there. This is my stash for baking. Again, this is gelatin that we bought, um, and then butterscotch chips for the scotcheroos, semi sweets, milk chocolate, and a few marshmallows for our hot cocoa. And then these were given to us um, an older gentleman that we know he has a big garden and at the end of the season he sends all his stuff to us that he has not used up and so at some point i meant to turn these into salsa too i just realized i forgot to bring those jars oh well um, this is spaghetti sauce back here that he canned and then some beets which I often will just take and pickle those because my kids prefer them pickled and then some potatoes that he canned. All right now for this um, black shelving unit that I have here um, we just moved this into here to give me a little bit more space um, for some of my food. This is what used to be, and I'll go across here, try to go slowly. This is a door that's gonna go in the bathroom, the new bathroom down here. This wall right here is now going to be covered up. It was where this food over here, this food right here was on that wall um, in a shelving unit that was there. And like I said, still just paring down um, crushed tomatoes, we make a lot of pizza sauce. I actually buy in bulk a pizza seasoning that um, goes really well for our spaghetti sauce and our pizza. Um, tomato sauce, there's tomato paste back there. I obviously need more tomato paste. I can see there's like three cans or two cans. Um, this was for a recipe, or no, this is for a recipe, this green enchilada sauce and this red that I never made. It's just sitting here now, so I need to make some enchiladas apparently. Um, we have a scratch and dent store and this was there for a good price. I do keep some marinara on hand. Um, it's good to like dip breadsticks and things like that in. So I do keep a little bit of that. And this is from Aldi and marinara is a zero sugar, um, zero added sugar. I don't know if you can see that. So there's zero added sugar and I like 
that for our um, spaghetti sauce and things like that. And then we do have, you know, like Aldi's version of Rotel, diced tomatoes. I really like these fire roasted ones. And then this is the one that has the um, oregano and garlic and basil in it. And then green chilies. We like to put green chilies in a lot of our um, casseroles. And then if you move down here, this is mostly um, canned meat over here. So that was like tomato products up here. And then down here is our meat. This is some meat that we actually get from a friend. Um, they have it down at their Costco in Arizona. We do not have this meat here. Um, they make a special dish called machaca with that meat and we really like it. And so we go ahead and get it from them when we see them. Um, I do have some, looks like some Parmesan cheese down here. Um, so this is like Keystone canned beef. I think there might be some chicken in there as well. Mostly I buy our chicken from Aldi. And then the dried beef or chipped beef, we use that in a cheese ball that we make also on the blog. Um, there is some canned salmon there to make salmon cakes. These here are absolutely disgusting, but um, my husband likes them. So we have some Vienna sausage. We have corned beef. This is a whole row of corned beef and we pair that with this sauerkraut and we make um, Rubens out of that, a quick way to do Rubens. And we just have some, you know, extra, like if we just could not afford meat, which right now some of the meat is extremely expensive. I bought these quite some time ago. They last a really long time. Again, not a fan of spam, but it's a, it's an emergency type thing. Um, these are so out of place. This is, let's see, this is tuna. Um, if I can turn it here. This is tuna. Somebody told me these were really good, so I picked up a couple. Uh, looks like more Vienna sausage and some pulled pork in those cans. And then this, you can tell I have been, things are not as neatly put together as they once were. I am a little discombobulated here, but this deviled ham we use in quiche a lot of times. And we have this really great quiche re recipe, not on the blog, <laughs> that we like to eat that has the deviled ham in it. And then I also have some cooked ham there. And these are things that I really have not gotten into much. This cooked ham, this beef here, um, like I said, the spam, it's just things that we don't eat on a regular basis from. This is more emergency. And at some point, what I'll need to do is come in here and take a look at dates. So that says 2026 on it. Um, I'll need to make sure that we're rotating through some of the stock and going ahead and eating some of it um, or donating it. And then down here are my beans, basically. I do have some of these Hungry Jack. My husband likes to have these on camping trips, these Hungry Jack potatoes. Um, these are just dried beans that I probably need to get put into like a container like this. I just haven't done it yet. And these right here, these are, we call them Anasazi beans. Um, they are from the ancient Puebloan people. Um, there are Pueblos in, ah, uh, it's either Colorado or New Mexico. Cannot remember right now. Um, anyway, these are beans that they found in those Pueblos from a long, 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 long time ago, and they were still viable. And so they perpetuated them, they got them germinated, and they now sell these beans. And we've always called them Anasazi beans, but apparently that is offensive. Um, so they're the ancient Puebloans, I believe is what they are now called. Um, my archeology span teacher and anthropology teacher in college, he always called them Anasazi. So it has stuck in my mind. Um, and then these are, these cans back here, and I don't know if you can see them. They're things like, you know, pasta rings and corned beef hash and uh, macaroni and beef. Okay, so these are from Aldi, and you'll see there's a there's a stack here of them, these ravioli too. These are emergency. Like if we have had a major natural disaster or something like that, these are things that go in our bag that we would take with us to eat. 
um, and I'll show you something else we take as well, but that is what those are for. We do not typically eat these um, unless they need to be like because of their date. Um, let's see, it looks like, yeah, next year they're gonna need to be eaten, um, but they are for emergencies only. And then these are the things that we use to make chili or chili dogs. You can see there's a layer of dust on them because we've been working in here. Um, we've got chili beans, black beans, cannellini beans, and garbanzo beans, and then some chili with beans and chili without beans are in this section. And it, I am running way low. We are we only have two garbanzo beans left. Um, yeah, not a lot of black beans. So yeah, this is this is going to definitely need to be. Um, taken care of I need to add to it this coming season and then again a section I hardly get into um, it's really more of a emergency stash in some ways is um, all of this all these vegetables so there's peas I do use the green beans and the corn um, the green beans I make a fancy green bean recipe that has mayonnaise and bacon and onion in it and so I do use back there's some green beans and then the corn and the cream corn. We have a corn casserole on the blog that I have. We have at holidays, and that's what those are for. Um, and then if the kids are on their own and need, you know, to grab a can of peas or whatever, that it's down here for them. Um, these water chestnuts. We do bacon wrapped water chestnuts for several special occasions, including our decorating day for Christmas and the kids really really like that so that is literally the only reason i keep water chestnuts is um, for the bacon wrapped water chestnuts and then french fried onions those are good to go on salads or of course green bean casserole that my oldest son really really likes we have some mushrooms in a can back there some panko um one box of lonely stuffing and then somehow my white vinegar ended up on this shelf as well. So that is really all I have right now in our overflow pantry. Like I said, we used to have several flats of beans. We used to have, you know, stacks and rows of things. And we just cannot do that right now because we don't have the room. Eventually when I get this place put back together, I'm not sure that I will stock it to the extent that I used to have it. Um, in 2021, I really started stocking up and I feel like now um, the grocery stores are better stocked. I do not feel like I am gonna walk into a grocery store and not be able to find what I need. It's the prices. And so that also makes me not wanna stock up right now is because I got a lot of these things that you see on these shelves, I got a lot of these at a really good price compared to where they are now. So I'm a little hesitant to do much stocking. I still have some jelly to make that will go on these shelves. Um, I have some other canning. I have some things in the freezer that need to be taken care of, but I've had a very, very busy summer and September. And so now I'm hoping I can find a way to do that. But I wanna show you one last thing that we have stocked. And this is something that is because we're military, these have actually come to us free of charge. Okay, so these are called MREs. They are meals ready to eat. And because my husband is military, when he goes out to the field, if he doesn't use them, he brings them home. And so we've got beef goulash here. Um, we've got pot roast and vegetables. This is literally in these bags. Here's like a beef strip, strips, savory tomato based sauce. In these bags, is everything you could possibly need for a meal. And it's fairly high um, calorie content because sometimes the guys out in the field, this is all they get in a day. So it is supposed to sustain them. Now, a lot of times they'll get three a day, but this is supposed to sustain them um, even if they were only able to get one. So these are, and yeah, there's some, there's some things mixed in there. Obviously not from this country. Um, but um, we got some black rifle coffee in there too. <laughs> I really, this is kind of a mess, sorry. Um, but this is also a stash that we can grab from if there has been an emergency and we need to grab a meal, even if I just pick up a few of these. 
um, it will be enough to keep us going for you know two three days and so there are things in there like um, there's candy even there's like dessert usually there's crackers there's pudding there's a drink there's the main meal and the main meal has um, yeah here it says flameless ration heaters are let's see prohibited on commercial airlines okay so there's there's ration heaters in here you just shouldn't take this on an airplane apparently though but um i don't plan on taking it on an airplane so that's what those are sorry for the glare there but there's so many different ones to choose from here's one that is um chicken chunks and it's kind of like a little surprise you never know what's going to be inside to go with the chicken chunks or whatever so um, this is just a stash that we have accumulated that is there for us if we have a natural disaster um, where we need to have food and we just we don't have anything these will these will sustain us so anyway that is something you can buy MREs on the economy as my husband calls it um, in the civilian world they just tend to cost a lot like I'm thinking these are maybe ten dollars a piece um, but like I said, everything is there. So it might be something you look into because it's a very simple way to grab and they pack really nicely into a bag that you could take um, if there were some sort of issue. So anyway, just something, some food for thought there. Ha ha. And this basically, guys, this is it. This is my overflow pantry. And I will at some point here, once it's no longer like this, I will show you how we have organized it once this wall has been put in here and maybe even give you a tour of the new bathroom once it's done. But for now, I wanted to share with you exactly how we do this. And guys, it's not fancy and that's okay.